Amen. So the title of my sermon today is A Good Name. A Good Name. And in this chapter that we just read, well, there's no other better name than that of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That is the best name. But the sermon is geared towards us, about, it's geared to you and me. So the sermon is about a good name. Now, in this chapter, Philippians chapter 2, if we look at verse 9, how the name of Jesus is exalted. The Bible reads from verse 9, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So here the Bible clearly again is telling us that it's the name of Jesus that is above all names. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So this is the supreme name and there's no other name that parallels this. So let me lay this foundation strong and clear for us as children that are in Christ Jesus. For we have believed in His name and are saved forever. So it's the name of Jesus that is the best name. There's none other name other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But we are His children, and there are parents here that have children. And uh, as parents, as dads and moms, what would you want your children to have? Would you want them to have a good name or a bad name? I'm sure every parent here, every dad, every mom would yearn, would desire that their children that are young yet and will grow up would have a good name. So we as earthly beings, as men and women of flesh and blood, dad and moms in flesh and blood, if we want our children to have good name, what about our Father in Heaven? What does He want His children, of which we are His children? Jesus says, but as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. So those that have believed in Jesus, we are His children, we are His sons and His daughters. What does He want us to have? He wants us to also have a good name. A good name. So, please go with me to Ruth, chapter 2, verse 11. Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 1, I will read for you. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor than loving favor rather than silver and gold. I repeat, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. This is a commandment in the book of Proverbs that we should have a good name. And the comparison is being made with with gold and silver. So a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Yet we can get all the things of the world, all the wealth, but if we have not a good name, that will not stand up in front of God. For His commandment here for us is that we should have a good name. And then the parallel is that that good name is like loving favor. It's that loving favor which, which we get when we have a good name. And Ruth is an excellent example in the Bible of a woman that had this good name. And because of this good name, what does she get? She gets loving favor from God in that she gets married to Boaz. So the backdrop of the, st of the story where I led you in your Bible is uh, Naomi is with her family in, uh, in this heathen land and a drought happens. She loses her sons and her husband and two of her daughter-in-laws are there, Orpah and Ruth, and uh, she tells her daughters to go back to their lands and to their people, but Ruth clave unto her mother-in-law. And she all, Ruth also says in the verses preceding, Thy God be my God. That's a symbol that Ruth is saved. And then Naomi comes back to the land of, uh, you know, the promised land of the children of Israel in, uh, in Judah. And uh, they're there and uh, Ruth is going into these, flea in these fields to glean because they're poor. Now verse 11. So she's gleaning in Boaz's field by, this, by, by the providence of God. Verse 11. Boaz is the owner of the field. And Boaz answered and said unto her, it hath, it hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, 
and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and art come unto a people which thou knowest not heretofore. So Ruth's virtuous state of being a virtuous woman, a godly woman, has reached into the eyes of, into the ears of Boaz. Boaz has never met Ruth before. But he sees the woman and his servants tell him she's that Moabitish woman that came with Naomi. So he has no clue, but he's never met her, but he knows. The good word, the good name of Ruth got into his ears because she was a godly, a virtuous woman. Now go with me just to the next chapter, Ruth 3, verse, Ruth, Ruth 3, verse 10. So again, by the providence of God, Naomi sends uh, her daughter-in-law Ruth to to propose to Boaz. And Boaz again recognizes her and look what he says. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. Again, Boaz is getting feedback from the community, from the town about this woman, Ruth. She's a virtuous, godly woman. She does not follow any a young man just like that. She's not, she's not uh, you know, lose. She's a very spiritually strong woman. She's single, she can marry, you know, but she's not poking her head, going from man to man, house to house. She's not doing any of the, those things. She goes, gleans, she comes back to her mother-in-law's house. That's what she's doing, and Boaz identifies that and quotes this, these words to, to encourage her. And yes, to praise her also. Followest, that, followest not young men, whether poor or rich. Verse 11. And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. This is the good name that Ruth has. The whole town knows about her. That her name is good, that she's a virtuous, godly woman. She's not a loose, skanky woman who's, who's, who needs attention and attraction from every Tom, Dick, and Harry. She's not like that. So this is that example of a, of a godly woman. And from this example, certainly an excellent example for all women to learn from, but also for men. Now the Bible has examples of men that have a good name. And one example is that of David. Go with me, please, to 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 1 reads, A good name is better than precious ointment. A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Again, a good name. And this is being compared with a precious ointment. We can get the best moisturizer, best ointment, best salve. How long does it last? just a few hours. It needs to be renewed again, applied again. It may have a, a good aroma, a good, good smell to it, but how long does that last? Highly temporary. But a good name is better because it lasts. It lasts in people's memories. It's, it's, it's in their hearts. They know. They have, they have understanding. They remember. That is why a good name is better than precious ointment. And it's compared here and the, to the day of death. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. So the day of death is better because once we have a good name, when we die as good Christians, we will be remembered as, as good Christians. Hey, Jane Doe died. She was a good godly woman. She was a good Christian. Hey, John Doe died. But people will remember at the day of his death, hey, he's a, he was a good godly Christian. But compared to that, the day of one's birth it's just, a, it's just a birthday. You've come into the world. It's a blessing from God, certainly. But I'm sure a lot of parents do have this idea in their mind also, this a little bit of apprehension. What will my daughter, what will my son be when he, she grows up? There's always that uncertainty. Because this baby who's just a few hours old has to grow up. A few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years old. And that's uncertain what they will do in their life. Yes, we hope and pray that they all become godly and holy. But that's not known. It's like uncharted, unknown territory. That's why a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Now coming to David here. 
the scene here is David has slayed Goliath the Philistine. And uh, he is with Saul. He's getting a lot of praise. He's getting a good name right now because of his valor, his bravery, which again was a blessing from God, certainly. And uh, he's with Saul. And then they're entering back into their city. Look what happens in, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 21. Before that, actually, I will read to you 1 Samuel 18, verse 6. So this is Gath, uh, David has just killed Goliath. So 1 Samuel 18, 6, I'll read to you. And it came to pass, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. So as they're coming in, David with Saul in the army, after killing uh, uh, Goliath, people are rejoicing and the women are praising. They're praising both David and Saul, but David gets more praise. Verse 7 says, And the women answered one another as they played, and, they, and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Such is the praise that is being meted out. This much to Saul, but this much to David. Again, this is a bit of an exaggeration. David did not literally kill ten thousand people. I believe he just slayed uh, Goliath. And then the other armies of the Isra is, uh, children of Israel went after the other Philistines that were fleeing. David may have killed just a few more others, but he certainly did not kill, kill these uh, thousands and thousands of people. Saul may have killed a few hundred, certainly. So this is what is happening. So this good news has been exaggerated by the community. So people knew. Certainly the children of Israel knew, but also the other surrounding nations also knew of this good thing that David did. Now read with me. So David's name traveled. See, it, it traveled. Look where it traveled to. 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 10. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. Now I'm fast forwarding. What has happened? The situation of David has fast forwarded here. So David is an armor bearer of Saul. Saul likes him in the beginning. But right here, when people are praising David more than him, Saul is wroth with David. And he becomes insecure of David and he's envious and he starts hating David and his escalation of hatred, his hatred for David escalates to this level that he wants to kill David. And David senses that and he escapes from Saul. So now in uh, where I led you is that situation where David has escaped the slaughter of Saul. And he escapes and goes into the Philistines land. 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 10. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish the king of Gath. Verse 11. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? So David's good name, his reputation as a good, strong, uh, battle-hardy warrior has gone into other lands. And here actually, this is a situation where a good name can actually cause you harm. In the example of Ruth, her good name, her virtuosity, her godliness, her popularity, that good name that she had, this reputation of a godly woman that she was, had, had an advantage, uh, was an advantage to her. For Boaz got married to her, and Boaz begat uh, Obed, Obed, Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. So the lineage of Jesus Christ is being established. So this is the, the advantage, advantage that Ruth got because of her good name. But here in the situation of David, he has a good name. He's a good battle-hardened warrior, a good godly man. His heart which is perfect towards God. But here his good name turns against him. Because this, this good name has re reached the Philistines. And David is here with the Philistines to seek refuge. But it turns against him because the servants of Achish, the king of the Philistines, Achish, they said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did, they, they, did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? So these Philistines are insecure for the sake of the good name that David has. And David does not get refuge in the Philistines. In fact, David senses this. And he, by the wisdom of God, he starts acting like a maniac. He starts acting like a mad, crazy man. He starts scrabbling on the walls of that city and with his spittle falling on his beard like a rabid dog. Because he wants to escape because the Philistines could have arrested him. They could have killed him because he's in his weak moment right now. So his good name did not lead to something good happening here. And look at verse, uh, uh, verse 12. 
And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And if you look at the first verse of the next chapter, it says, and David escaped. So here, this is an example of having a good name where you suffer harm because of a good name. Comparing that with Ruth. Ruth, a good name, wonderful blessings. But David, in this situation, he has a good name, but he suffers harm. What about us? From Ruth we learn, so must we also learn from David that this good name led to harm, led to a dangerous situation. For such will be our situation also. This good name that we should seek in godliness, in holiness, is not in the whole world. It's amongst our brethren. And yes, for our sakes, our standing in the eyes of God the Father. And Jesus Christ himself said, he said very clearly, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Howsoever godly and holy we become, which we should, the world will hate us. Our good name can be used against us. If not now, certainly in future. It will happen because Jesus has said so. We will be hated for our good name for our good Christian name, for our good Christian standing, we will be hated. Yeah, amongst brethren, I pray that we hate not each other. John the Apostle says, But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness. So, if a brother hates another brother, he is not saved. A Christian brother in Christ cannot hate another Christian brother. You can, you can have some uh, troubles, you can have some discomfort, but it will not be hatred. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness. In this epistle, in one of John's epistles here, this implies not being saved. So if we are brethren in Christ and somebody has a good name, we must not hate them. If somebody has a bad name, we must not hate them. But the world will hate us. You see, this hatred is the world that is, this hatred is the hatred that the world has for us. We, we cannot have hatred amongst each other, amongst brothers and sisters. It's, it's impossible. First John chapter 3, verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. So John the, John the Apostle is again ramming this in that we will be hated. We have a good name. We have a solid Christian name, we have a good standing with God, yet we will be hated by the world. The same way as David's good warrior name was disliked by Achish and his servants in Gath amongst the Philistines. Such will be our situation as well. But let this not hinder us. Let, 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 let this not uh, demoralize us. We must continue our walk with Christ. And uh, we, have, we, we should strive, this good name, this good name is amongst believers, yet we will be hated amongst the heathen. Let us be forewarned about this. Now aspects of this good name about, you know, what, what, uh, what about this good name? We must not crave for this good name because we don't seek fame. We are not seeking popularity. We don't want our name to be put on the front cover of Time Magazine or Newsweek. That's not what we want to do. That's, that is not what we desire. And this, this standing with God, this good name as a good believer, a good Christian, it comes with time. It's not, it's not a switch. You just turn on the switch or everything turns on. No, it does not happen like that. Romans chapter 2, verse 6. Paul talks about this. You don't need to go there. So, as we're patient, patiently walking, on the path of Christ, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So those that are patient in their, in their uh, well-doing, in their service unto God, such will be blessed by God. Certainly eternal life and, and those glories and honors and that come with immortality in eternal life, but certainly blessings also on this earth with patient continuance. And we remember the parable of the sower in Luke chapter 8. You don't need to go there again. There are four seeds that are sown. And Jesus talks about that fourth seed, which is certainly a saved seed. 
In this parable, I believe the, th the third and the second are also saved. But in the fourth seed, he talks in Luke 18, 8, 15, but that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So this good seed is the good Christian. He sowed on good ground. And he's serving God, coming to church, reading the Bible, praying every day, going soul winning, exhorting, edifying his brothers and sisters in Christ, steering clear of temptations by the power and mercy of God. What does this good seed do? It brings forth fruit with patience. So as we grow as Christians, as we bring forth fruit with patience, God will bless us with a good name. So it is not, impa it, it is not with impatience. It is not with haste. It is uh, not to crave as if it's something unattainable and I must get it. No, it's not like that. Some men have spoken about the walk of a Christian in the Christian life as if it's a, it's a, it's a marathon. Some men say it, it's probably longer than a marathon. And as we grow in Christ, you know, different men and women, believers, brothers and sisters, they have different paces of growth spiritually. And oftentimes, you know, no one is infallible. We may get impatient. I'm serving God. I'm, I'm doing so much for God. Yet I don't know what people think of me, my brothers and sisters. Number one, we should not think of others at all. We should just think, think of, about us and God, what God thinks of us, not opinions of others. But this insecurity can come into some believers' heart. Now please go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 24. And this insecurity can lead to demoralization. It can, it can retard our growth as believers. It can be a stumbling stone, a stumbling block in our progress as Christians. We must be wary of this. Again, this is interwined with patience, being patient as believers. So 1 Timothy 5, chapter 24. The Bible reads, some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. Likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. So the Bible is saying very clearly that if we are doing good works with humility, with dedication to the service of God, our good works, God will make them manifest, cannot be hidden. Just like some people's sins, some of them are open beforehand. They get arrested. Their, no, their name is flashed on the billboards, on jumbotrons and newspapers and on the websites. Just like they are exposed openly, going to judgment. And some, their sins are not revealed immediately. Their sins are re re uh, revealed later on, maybe even after they, after they die. And what they're left with is not a good name, but a very bad name. That leaves a stinking savor. Similarly, exactly the opposite way, our good works, which we do with humility, you know, with our dedication and reverence of God, our good works will be, some of them will be manifest beforehand, and, they that are, that, and those that are not manifest, they cannot be hid. They will come out. The goodness and our holiness and our godliness will come out, will be revealed. That's the promise of God. So let us not be impatient to get this, this good, uh, good standing with God, this good name. It'll, it'll come with time. And even if it does not come, it doesn't matter. For God knoweth the heart. Jesus knows our hearts. You know, He knew the hearts of, uh, uh, of, of, of Israel. So He knows our heart also. And in the end, it's the standing of our heart with Jesus. Yeah, we got a good name here, that's good. Again, this good name is not for our fame. It is not for our popularity. I would like to ram this again. It is not for us. It's to exalt God, to exalt Jesus, to make His name shine forth more and more. And as we do that, by His blessings, we will shine forth. We will shine forth. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, Wherefore, then he says there, whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. So Paul is telling us to do everything for the glory of God. That's what we have to do. That, that's, what is, that's what is our first service. Again, he says, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. 
So all that we do, we should do to give God the glory and for His glory and His, for His praise and for His honor. And like He is, shall we be also? For Jesus says in, in the Old Testament, His Word says, Be holy for I am holy. So God wants us to be holy and this holiness will bring us that good name. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we should let our light shine, our Christian walk, our Christian uh, service. Let it shine in the eyes of the world that they may glorify the Father in heaven. As we go so winning, you know, we should, we should preach with boldness and zeal so that our service glorifies the Father which is in heaven. Again, we are, we are imperfect. We will be perfect when Jesus comes, but we are imperfect in our flesh. We, we stumble, we fall, we are weak. In Christ we are strong, yet we, we, we cannot let go of this flesh, for we are in this flesh and we sin and we have, we have challenges that we face. Proverbs 24, 16 says, A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Such should we be. As we walk as Christians, strengthen ourselves in the faith, we, we become just and if we fall, we will rise up again. And the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and He delighteth in His way. So God looks at us, looks at us He sees us. What are we doing to get closer to, closer to Him? What are we doing to serve Him? What are, we, what, what are we doing to further His kingdom and His word? And if He sees that, He will bless us more and more, including with a good name. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1 says, Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. So as Christians, we have to be careful for any slip we do that could lead to a stinking savor. A little folly, him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Now again, these, these wisdoms and honors are not of the world. Our honor is through Christ. Our wisdom is through Him. And as we grow in the faith, as we get uh, you know, more stronger in the faith, we have to be more and more careful for to whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. So as we, get, as we grow in the faith, as stronger Christians, we have to be more and more careful to not slip and fall, to not commit follies. Folly means to make mistakes. We should not. So we should try our level best by the power of God, by His mercy, that we keep falling on His path. And yet, if we fall, we have this confidence that the Word gives, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But who, who falls seven times and rises up again? A just man. Not a sinner. Again, we are sinners, but, you know, those to him that knoweth to do good, good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Yeah, we sin every day. But if we're voluntarily, just completely, repetitively committing sin, we will not we will not, we will not fall. I mean, we will not rise up again. We'll fall. We'll just keep falling. We may even stay fallen. For Jesus says, He says, He says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 19, He says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. His level of chastening will reach such, such a level if we are in complete, total, recurrent disobedience that we will not rise up again. We'll just fall. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be in heaven, certainly. But, on the earth our life will be made miserable. So therefore we should strive to serve God and not, not have our life as this uh, ointment of the apothecary which has dead flies in it that brings forth a stinking savor. Now please go with me to Psalm 15 verse 1. Now all of us I hope are admonished and exhorted and, and encouraged to get, that, that this, get this good name, to have a good name. And what, what is one thing which can happen in churches which can derail that? Not because of our own doing, but some other envious, covetous, insecure brethren in, in the church. What can derail that? That is 
gossiping and talebearing. A good name can be tarnished permanently with that. And we as believers must not engage in backbiting, gossiping, talebearing. We should not do that about anybody at all. Unless we have full facts. And if, if these facts and information that we have of somebody is so dangerous, then we should go to the authorities. We should go to the deacon, the pastor. Not spread it around. No. Why not? For this is a commandment. A commandment from our God. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 16, it says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Nothing can be more clear as a commandment than this here. Thou shalt not go. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Just, who can say that gossiping is allowed amongst believers? You can do a little. Oh, children can get away with it. Oh, it's just a woman thing. I've seen men gossip. Any brother in Christ or sister in Christ is engaging in gossip. That's, that's a blatant sin against God because you're disobeying a Levitical law. Again, not just for Levites, for every believer. It destroys somebody's name. And you know, it may take a long time for somebody to recover from the shaming that can happen, from the tarnishing that can happen to somebody's name, to somebody's reputation. And it can divide the church. It is not healthy for our church if we're, if we're gossiping or spreading tales about a brother or sister in Christ. The words of a talebearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. So when we gossip, it becomes a wound that goes into the innermost parts of the belly. Like the worst gastric ulcer that you can have. That kind of gnawing pain. That's what it is likened to here. The words of a talebearer are as wounds. Let us not. Let us not tail bear. Again, we tail bear, things are discovered, word passes here and there, everybody learns, knows, understands, and you can offend a brother in Christ. And the Bible says a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. Our friendships, our fellowships, our, our brotherhood, our sisterhood amongst believers can be irreparably destroyed. And what will suffer in the end? This church will suffer, which has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. So I strongly admonish each one of us here that we should not gossip, we should not tail bear, we should not tattle. Psalm 15.1, what does the Bible say? Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue nor doeth evil to his neighbor nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. He that backbiteth not with his tongue. So we are all going to heaven, but this verse says that there are some believers which will be in the tabernacle with God. I want to be in the tabernacle with God in heaven. You see, heaven is a complicated place. I want to be in the tabernacle with God. And what is one way that we can get there? is to not backbite with our tongue or with any other way. Do not backbite, do not, do not uh, uh, tail bear, do not gossip. Now we as, as Christians, as we're, as we're growing, we get blessings from God. We get, He'll pour out His blessings upon us. And uh, there are examples in the Bible of Jesus' 
disciples, the apostles themselves, as they were learning in the faith and they were being blessed by God, there was an element of pride that, that developed in them. And uh, I want us all to be wary and careful of this pride that can come as we start getting that good name, as we start being uh, uh, known as believers, as real strong believers, as, as believers that bear fruit, whose fruit remains. So in uh, Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 20, now you could go there certainly. So the apostles, they want to strike down you know, they're, 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 they're getting blessings, they're getting people healed, they're casting out demons out of, out of people's souls. They're doing a lot of good works, they're also being recognized by, uh, by the people around them. And they come back to Jesus to give their report and they say, Lord, we are casting out demons, we're healing the sick, we're doing all these wonderful things, Lord, this is amazing. And look what Jesus says in Luke chapter 10 verse 20. He says, Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So as we get blessings from God, as we walk on that path, and as we, are, we have a good name, we should not become prideful. We should always be happy and rejoice that our names are written in heaven. That is that best name. That name which is in heaven which God will give to us when we go to heaven. That is that best name. That, to that we should have our eyes. And on the earth we serve God. Jesus again sets that standard, our Lord and Savior, about humility. Again, going back to the chapter, Philippians chapter 2, where we started. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, it talks about Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, a good name, reputation, honor. He made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Such is our Lord and Savior. He has a good name. He has the best name. Even the heathen know about Jesus. His word, the Bible, the most widely read, widely sold book since creation. And what did he do? He humbled himself. Did he not know that everybody, the devils are afraid of him and the heathen, the reprobates are afraid of him? Does he not know that? Did he not know? He knew it. He's the creator and owner of the heavens and the earth. And what did he do? He came to earth. God manifest in the flesh. The Father sent his Son. And he humbled himself. That's what he did. And from him should we learn. As we grow. Now he's extremely abundant in his mercies and his blessings. We'll, we'll have so many blessings we won't even know what to do with them. But yet in all that we should not be prideful. We should always be humble. Matthew chapter 23 verse 5 talks about some believers who may, who may get into this prideful thing as they get these blessings of God. And they are very similar to these Pharisees. He says, But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Such are these uh, you know, uh, Pharisees, and such could some believers be also. Now, phylacteries that... That, that cube that the Jews put on their head, that's what it means. So, because these people need to be seen of men, they make it broader, broader, bigger, bigger. That's what they want to do. And a person that, uh, you, you know, I'm reminded of is this man called Adam Fannin. And we saw his behavior. And in all that uh, uh, soap opera drama that he was doing, I think he's saved. Again, he, I, don't, I don't know his heart. I've never met him. He was already ordained as uh, the evangelist and was supposed to be ordained as a pastor of that church in, in Florida, Steadfast Baptist Church in Jacksonville. And then uh, things happened with Donnie Romero and uh, you know things were not working for him because the decisions were made that he, would, he should just continue in his status as that evangelist, but no, he wanted preeminence. He wanted him for himself a better name. He wanted to be seen of men. That's what he wanted to do. 
So he was in complete disobedience for the sake of pride, for the sake of his own vain glory. And then he was rightfully thrown out of that church. Don't know what he's doing. I hope he's saved. I think he's saved, but believers can do a lot of bad things and we should, we should learn from this, that we should not be proud. And to get this good name, it's not for our sake. It's not our names to be broadcasted, no. It's to give glory to Jesus Christ. Jesus says, Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. These are like, the, these statements of Jesus Christ are sharper than mathematical equations. Just clear, there's no middle ground of the stupidity of Buddhism or Hinduism, middle path, no. It's black and white, yes and no. Day and night, that's how it is. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. So if in our heart we have any pride or any self-exaltation, God will abase us. We should be, this should be guaranteed. And if we are humble in the Lord, He will exalt us in due time. Now this good name as we get, as we grow in the faith, we should protect. Go with me to Revelation chapter 3 verse 12. So all that God is, will give us as we become holy, become godly, we should protect especially our spiritual self. And this good name, in the, in, in, as good Christians, we should protect. For the Bible says, He that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. So all that we have, these spiritual blessings, we must protect. Men, protect your name. And how will you protect your name? By being godly, by, by being uh, forthright with God. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So we have to be careful in our standing at every step by the blessing of God, but He will help us. He will, he will make us walk through the Red Sea, which is around us every day. He will part it for us. But hey, do we want to go forward? Because God told Moses, tell them to go forward. Do we want to go forward? Because if we don't go forward, we will be slain by the Egyptians. We don't have any choice here. God, keep moving forward and God will help us every step along the way and He will help us protect all the spiritual blessings we have. Even the tangible also, because God does not leave us starving. He knows that we have need of food and raiment and He will bless us with that. And even if there are men here who are aspiring to be pastors, clearly Paul writes here, moreover about uh, pastors, moreover he must have a good report of them which are without so just to be a pastor, you have to have a good report of those that are without, that are outside. The common gentry, the Gentiles, the unbelievers. We should not be infamous amongst them. We should not be hated of them either. And we can discern what kind of hatred the heathens hate. We know that the hatred that is for Christ. But the other kind of dislike, you know, hey, he's, he's slow at his work. He comes to work late. These kinds of things. You know, we have to be hard workers. And we have to guard and protect our name. Women must protect their name. Their reputation. Paul writes to Timothy, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Clear instructions for our sisters in Christ to be godly, get married, guide the house, obey your husband, fear God first, and love God first. And the virtuous woman, such an excellent example, not just Ruth here, but Proverbs 31, the last proverb of, of, uh, of, of the book of Proverbs. Most of it is dedicated to being a virtuous woman. And I admonish every uh, sister in Christ to read that and aspire to be such. And the last verse of Proverbs 31, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. And what will she get as she works towards being a virtuous woman? She will get praise. What will she get? A good name. Not infamy, not notori not notoriety, 
but a good name. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. That's what children must do to get a good name. Yes, again, first, preeminence is God, our love and fear of Him. But then, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And the Bible has, again, many examples. The, the book of Romans, chapter 16, with, is full of good names, which Paul remembered. Priscilla, Aquila, Andronicus. There are many names there. They're all good names. They're, chapter 16 is a very edifying chapter in the book of Romans. These are all good names. The Bible will not be rewritten. But amongst brethren, we must have a good name by His blessing. Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. It's, it's, it reads, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. So this is, is the new name which we will get, which we will inherit in heaven. We have our eyes on that. For we, we, we hope in earnest for that day, for to live as Christ and to die as gain. But God has purposes for us here on the earth. We will get these names. Jesus himself will have a new name. So these new names are for then, but for now, it is to have a good name for each one of us in Christ. Shall we end in prayer?